Listen, I did film and television studies at university for three years. I spent hours reading countless books and articles on subjects spanning from film all the way to television. Not a single one mentioned Hugh Grant once. I achieved the hardest qualification across any university or college ever, a 2-1 in history. Let me tell you, the only thing that I learned was that we, as a society, have a history of denying and neglecting Hugh Grant's artistic and cultural relevance, not just in this country, but in the entire world. I met Oscar at a Hugh Grant-themed event I put on at the Students' Union. It felt as though Diggory and I were the only ones there. And we agreed that there was a Hugh Grant-shaped hole in academia. We decided to put it right ourselves. We want to show people that he's an icon in acting. We want to show people he's more than just a bumbling posh guy. I'm Diggory Waite. And I'm Oscar Beardmore Gray. And, and this, this is... Take it you for granted. Hello there, you're listening to Taking Hugh For Granted, the only podcast in the world that reviews every single Hugh Grant film and asks that all-important question, is Hugh being taken for granted? We realise that we're living in rather uncertain times right now, so we thought we'd brighten your day and not mention that dreaded C word once for the next half an hour or so. As always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host Diggory Waite. Say hi, Diggory. Hello, everyone. Today, we bring you a very special one-off Q&A episode where we'll be answering all of your wacky questions you've kindly sent in to us. We're also excited to be joined later by a very special guest who's been a loyal follower of the pod since its inception. Diggory, you excited about this one? I can't wait, Oscar. I can't wait. When we sent out, you know, the questions, we thought, oh, many fans, they might just look at it and think, oh, what's going on there? They might not even understand what a QA and a is, a question and answer session. You know, people want to hear about Hugh, they don't want to hear about us and our lives, but... We've got a lot of questions in. I'm very excited. Yeah, I've been really, really um, blown away by the response of, of people out there. We put a little post on Instagram, on Twitter, and we probably had about 20, 25 uh, questions come in. We'll do our very best to answer all of them. Yes. Are there any circumstances in which uh, the two of you might be more than just good friends? Wait a minute. What, are, what are exactly are you suggesting? So this is a good way to start, actually. We have a question here from Aidan Selwood on Instagram. And Aidan asks, did you two actually meet at a Hugh Grant-themed event? <laughs> well, I don't know whether we should give the honest answer here, Degree. What do you think? Well, the honest answer is, of course, we met at a Hugh Grant-themed event. <laughs> that, it'd be, it'd be, it would be heinous of us to, uh, to have lied to our listeners. Of course. So at the University of Bristol, there was a Hugh Grant-themed event. And as we say... It, there were the two people there, or at least it felt like that. I swear you were dressed as Doctor Who. Was that a thing? Was it a, was it a dress up thing? No. Christ, just 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 for just for the fun of it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, or maybe God. you weren't dressing up. Oh God. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, that's <laughs> maybe fine. I just thought you looked like Doctor that, Who, and and you thought that I would like that, that I basically shape myself on Doctor Who. It's just I want to go back to university and redo the whole thing. So what I'm trying to say is, guys, is we were two very, very cool big names on campus back in Bristol. Huge names on campus. Yeah, and, mate. I mean, um, you couldn't bloody move for thinking about us. And, and here we are, two or three years later, making a podcast about Hugh Grant. So, you know, dreams and aspirations for all you out there. Exactly. Who's um, laughing now? Right. Moving on to the next question. Uh, mm. This question is from Rebecca Madden via email. Rebecca... Thank you very much for sending this in. Her question is, if you could cast Hugh, in brackets, the greatest actor of all time, in any pre-existing movie role, what would it be and why? This this one's really hard. Um, I was thinking I'd really liked to have seen him as, um, in Harry Potter, the second one, who's the guy, you know, the... the... Lockhart. Lockhart, Professor Lockhart. That you, would you know, be... mate. That's that's funny. But you say that because I was actually thinking along the same similar lines. I was thinking, why hasn't Hugh Grant been in Harry Potter? And then oh. I was thinking, which what character would I think he'd be good as? And Lockhart sprang to mind big time because he plays that like he plays that sort of meant to be slightly crazy, funny, comedic character. Mm. So I think he would actually be very good for that role. Exactly, he's posh and egocentric and well up himself. Um, 
I think that's that's one of my more serious answers. And also, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I may have even read somewhere that he was actually down to play that role. But also, maybe, why not have him as, I don't know, Jason Bourne? <laughs> or James Bond? <laughs> Mate, honestly, okay. Just like a proper okay. action this is what I want. This is what I wanted to get into, the more hilarious answer. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I had down uh, um, the Joker... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's nearly spilled with water that. You see, can you imagine with like mm. the makeup on oh, and amazing. his hair everywhere yeah sort of you know you know that scene when he's like the, the why so serious scene and he's got the knife and it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. why and then she, so and, serious yeah. and she's like uh, are you having negative thoughts and he's like well uh, uh, all I'm having are negative <laughs> thoughts uh, oh god that would be incredible um, that'd be so good Another one I thought would be quite amusing as well um, would be uh, Hugh Grant as Maximus, Decimus, and Radius in Gladiator. Oh my word! <laughs> oh my word! Hugh comes into the arena. We're imagining him in the Bridget Jones, <laughs> so he's ripped. Yeah. Oh and yeah. He's just and he's just going. Are you not entertained? Yes, just like he is in the Bridget Jones water. So he's like he's he's drenched, probably not from water pond water, but now from the blood of his slain enemies. He's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, and he looks around. Are you not? Well, he's like, are, are you are you entertained? <laughs> no. Um, oh my god! That, and also just that bit where he'd be like, uh, "My name is uh, Maximus Desmus uh, Grantius." <laughs> and uh, and I, uh, I I I will I will have my vengeance yes, in, I, I suppose in this life or, or, or the next. Um, <laughs> Mate, that is a brilliant impression. <laughs> it's the best I've got. I really oh we, I got I got to hold it down again. Another fantastic question. Thank you so much, Rebecca Madden. Okay, sorry. Can I just go? I know we haven't got much time. But no worries. In all seriousness, I think that Hugh Grant, if if put in this role, if put in the role of James Bond, could actually do it quite well. Stage combat, level four. Class, I would be well up for seeing that. That'd be fantastic. A absolutely brilliant question, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Um, Oscar, I'll put this to you. If you really were Prime Minister, like in Love Actually, which policies do you think he would most likely introduce? And that's submitted by Arthur Hetherington. Um, Arthur. Um, well, there's some obvious ones mm -hmm. and there's some less obvious ones. The obvious ones, I would say, um, as we all know, Hugh's got quite into his politics. So I'd say overturn Brexit. Yes, that's good. That's uh, a good one. Uh, maybe make the paparazzi illegal. Yeah, I could see that. And then... Two other ones I thought would be quite funny are, firstly, jail Piers Morgan. Yes. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> God, this is this is a good world that we're living in right now. I, I'd be yeah, happy with him as prime minister. And then all prime ministers have to do a dance-off initiation on live TV when they get into the <laughs> PM's office. Because we've seen Theresa May. She likes doing dancing. That's true. Oh, man. Boris man. Johnson. Yeah. I'm sure he Where your moves. Yeah, where your moves, mate. Uh, to be honest, though, the problem is, is I was going to say he would, would, wouldn't be then let in to number 10 because he, he, you know, as we know, he hated the idea of filming it that day. But all he'd have to say is, look, just look at the back catalogue. Go watch Love Actually. You can see I can move. Actually, half of those films these days, I keep seeing him dancing in all these films. Um, he okay, can... how about this? Um, I've just, this has just come to my head. Mm. A montage video where every living and past prime minister walks down the stairs of number 10 doing Hugh Grant's dance. Oh so we have kind of like, we have like crusty John Major. We bring out <laughs> Tony Blair. We bring out Gordon Brown, David Cameron. We're bringing out Churchill. <laughs> Churchill is pretty amazing. They have to be alive. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, sorry. I just thought you meant every prime minister ever. I was like... No, what? an actual video of right, right oh, now. Wow. Where they do it for like a, a red nose special or something. You that, know? that would be absolutely incredible. Okay. Uh, maybe we should smash through a few here. Yeah. We've, uh, yeah, some uh, quick fire okay. ones. Some quick fire questions. I'll just fire away then, shall I? 
If Hugh Grant didn't exist, which other actor would you choose to dedicate a whole podcast to? That's another one from Aidan Selwood via Instagram. This one's really hard. Okay, well, um, this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. I would only do a podcast on another actor that we could come up with a pun for the name. Of course. So so I came up with a few. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> these, are, these are really bad. They're obviously not as good as the amazing Taking Hugh for Granted, but we could mm. have Getting Carried Away with Jim Carrey. No, that's, that's good, that's magic. good. Far, far, fr okay, from far, far, half away. That's all about <laughs> Anne Hathaway. <laughs> thing is, like, what, what's the, so, uh, I want to interrogate these quickly. So, far, far, half away, what, what, what are we trying to work out? Are we, are we going to, oh, that's far, far away from her best? Or are we being like, like, how did? May yeah, maybe far, 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 far away from Hathaway's best. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But then, Getting then... carried away would be like, we're getting too carried away with how good Jim is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like it. I like it. Any more? Um, yeah, I've got The Dench Press, which is about Judy Dench. <laughs> that's actually, that's seriously good. I like that a lot. Um, and then this one's a bit rogue. Uh, another Hugh. Yeah. So Hugh's jacking off man. <laughs> that's about Hugh Jackman. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't think that one would make it past iTunes as a, uh, no. um, you know, censorship. Yeah, they might have and then, an issue. <laughs> one more. Um, this one's a bit, I don't know if this is a bit weak, but walking and, t w walking and talking with Christopher about Christopher <laughs> Walken. <laughs> no, you'll take it. Walking and talking. I mean, is he walking the walk or is he talking the talk? I like yeah. that. That's actually a good one. The thing is, <laughs> um, being serious though for a second, Hugh Grant, we stumbled on a great one there because he has such a trajectory and such a, a, a narrative as an actor. It's like I, I thought about, you know, uh, like Brad being pitted or whatever, but it's like if we watch all of Brad Pitt's films, we're going to like the majority of them. With Hugh Grant, mm -hmm. there's so much context going on there with the fact that you know people think pigeonhole him as one kind of thing and he's having this renaissance you know there's so many great things about hugh grant and let's be honest oscar i know you're the same i wouldn't do it about anyone else because i nope. love hugh grant nope couldn't nope. do it wouldn't be the same wouldn't be the same diggory from submitted by ricardo din din Wo woody am i from pronouncing that right woody no idea. Din woody din woody i don't know yeah ricardo sorry mate thanks ricardo yeah, yeah. we butchered your name there um <laughs> if you had to be a character that gets bonked by you in a film which bonky would you be and why mate there are some serious seriously lovely bonkies out there um i think uh, if I had to be a bonky, I think just off the top of my head, I'll just give you straight the answers. We're doing quick fire. I think it would have to be Julia Roberts in uh, Notting Hill, just because I think towards the end of the film, we actually get like, I just feel like th those few days when she's hiding out there and they're together and they're reading together and, you know, they're obviously sleeping together. I just feel like that's such a, that's a hot romantic moment. So I would love that. And also they're both very attractive people. So that. That'd be amazing. Right then, Oscar, we have uh, another question here submitted by Naz Shah, who says, if you were to open a high street shop, what kind of shop would it be? Oh, it's a hard one. Um, my What initially sprang to mind was something like a florist or a bookshop, but I thought that was a bit boring. And a bit classic. So I've seen it already. I mean, it's classic. We, yeah, mm. you, I think you'd be good at that. But I was thinking maybe a hairdresser, a hair salon. <laughs> oh, that'd Give be everyone great. A huge, so you have several options that, you know, basically on the wall of the hairdresser, you have all, all the films he's been in and you get oh. and you go in and what haircut you want. Oh, mate. So I, I, I'd probably go in for four weddings and a funeral haircut first up. That's very good. Um, I have to tell you now, this is a fantastic idea. I would definitely go for his hair as Daniel Cleaver in uh, in Bridget Jones. Oh, Slightly yes, longer mate. locks. Very sexy. That would be such a... I, honestly, I think that would sell well. It would, would sell super know. well. It would sell super well. Okay, the next question. Mm. Submitted by Henrietta Basket. Thank you very much, Henrietta. Uh, has Hugh ever had facial hair in a film? Yes, Maurice. Next. What character... And, and the gentleman. And the gentleman. I forgot about that. Fantastic point. Um, what character would you be cast as in the school's nativity? And that's submitted by Bradley Fung. On, uh, on Instagram. Thank you, BJ. Fung3. So I was a little bit confused about this question. Did he mean what character would Hugh be cast or actually me? So I'll answer I think, both. Yes. Judging, we all know about me and the pillow man. <laughs> so 
I would say that I would be the second lobster at the Nativity. I don't know. If, I, th- I assume Brad <laughs> Brad was referring to Love Actually in the famous line where mm. Emma Thompson asks her child, were there really lobsters at the birth of Jesus or whatever? <laughs> so I would go second lobster. Nice, no, Hugh, mate. Hugh's got to be the leading role. He's got to be Joseph or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or why not? Jesus. I mean, there's been some times where I've thought to myself, could could he be the second coming? Are you a business owner? Are you running a political campaign? Are you a furniture outlet having yet another sale? If the answer to any of those questions isn't no, then you can have your advertisement right here. The Taking You For Granted podcast gets over a hundred listeners every single episode. For prices starting as low as six figures, you can have your advertisement right here. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Email takingyouforgranted at gmail.com today for a full price list. And you can have your advertisement right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a very quick uh, break in the middle of our very special Q&A episode as we're joined, Oscar and I, by a very, very special guest, Mary. Um, how are you doing? It's lovely to have you on your show. You're one of our first listeners um, to the podcast. How are you doing on this fine day? I'm pretty good. I'm I'm really glad to be here with you guys. Really. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much for coming on, Mary. It's 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 amazing to to know that there are fans out there that you know from all over the world that we can just connect to. Um, uh, you know, it's amazing that um, that that you you found the podcast. Maybe maybe I'd start off by asking. Um, you like where you're from and um, how you found the podcast and maybe what you do for a for, for a living. Sure. Um, so I live in Illinois in in the U.S. Um, Great. And I by day I I am a what's called a care coordinator. So I do case management like social work um, with older adults, people sixty and over. Cool. Um, and I found the podcast I believe on Instagram. Um, I follow the Hugh Grant hashtag, and uh, I remember one day seeing um, probably one of your posts, I believe, and then I liked it, and I was like, oh, there's a podcast, so I'm not <laughs> completely by myself, <laughs> so I, yes. that's when I, so I was like, that's when I got to start listening, I'm like, well, now there's like kind of like a place for me, because I kind of always felt a little disconnected, because I'm like, well... I, I, I feel like there's not a lot of people out there who are actually analyzing Hugh Grant's work. <laughs> and I think that's just such a brilliant thing that you guys are doing. I really think that's amazing. So so in your hometown in, in, in Illinois, would you say that many people appreciate the, the work of Hugh Grant? Or, or are you one of your, you know, you, amongst your friends, um, do, do, do they watch Hugh Grant films as avidly as you do? Not, not nearly. Um, I, and I grew, and I'm in a rural community. Um, I live in the country actually. And, um, but my friends, um, I've kind of introduced them to Hugh Grant. I feel like they're like, who, you know, they're kind of like, I'm not sure. And then you show them a picture and they're like, oh yeah, that guy, you know, it makes sense. that (laughs) Who Grant? (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah. So, um, my friends have kind of been, um, I mean, I don't give them much of a choice either, but they're, uh, they've been watching some of his films with me and I think they do have an appreciation, you know, I do think they're, you know, I think they, they roll their eyes at me a little bit, but I think they also understand a little bit too, like, I do, like that I appreciate him as an actor, you know, as well as, of course, he's, he's great looking, but. But he's a really good actor. Yeah, of course. That makes a really, that's a really good point. I mean, that part of what I suppose drew me to him was I I came for the looks. Let's be real. I came for the Hugh Grant um, sort of style. And I stayed for for the fact that he is a fantastic actor. Um, I see on your Twitter as well that you were a lover of of British actors. Um, Do you have any other British actors that you're a big fan of? Or is it mostly Hugh Grant? I've always liked like European actors. Um, I don't like Irish, mm. English actors. I, I don't, I think I like the accents, I guess, I suppose. Because um, mm. in America, we just, our, our voices are just, they're not as exciting. Um, I really like Henry Cavill, who's actually in The Man from Uncle with Hugh Grant. So that movie's a, that movie just oh, is a really okay. good compounding there for me. <laughs> I love him. I think he's great. 
Oh. And, oh, um, we'll have to we'll have to get to that film as soon as possible, just so we can just for you. <laughs> oh, just for me, I I do, but I do really like that movie. Um, yeah. And and him and him as an actor. Um, mm. But I like a lot of Irish actors as well. And and it, if you if there was one, you know, if if you were say stuck on a desert island and uh, there was only one Hugh Grant film that you could you could watch on loop forever, what would that be? Do you think? I had a feeling you guys were going to ask that question, and I was sitting there thinking about it too, because like it's it's like trying to pick your favorite. Because mm. I feel like I go in phases. I go in phases with his movies, like which one I I think is the favorite. Um, mm. You know, all over all around, mm. and I actually think it would. It's it's weird that I come back to this one always. I always come back to Four Weddings and a Funeral. Actually. Mm. I, I, there's something about that movie to me. For me, on a personal level, I, I just really connect with that movie. I don't know. There, well, there's a lot I connect to with it, but um, I just think it's it's got some reality to it in kind of the um, melancholy of love. Mm. It's not it's not really a happy go lucky look at it. It's very it's kind of kind of sad, kind of. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the best word for that film because it's it's not a very and you guys even said it in the podcast episode it's not a very happy it's not necessarily the happiest look at love I just think it's more maybe realistic in some senses like especially like with the Fiona storyline and all that I, I really relate to that like mm. that whole liking someone or caring about someone and maybe they don't like you back and I just think there's a reality to to a lot of that Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that, actually, because sometimes uh, Oscar and I fret that some of the Hugh Grant faithful will see, you know, we'll have sometimes, maybe we won't just blindingly say, oh my God, this is the most amazing film ever because it has Hugh Grant in. We do, we do take this, you know, we take them seriously. And I think as fans, um, you can either be the kind of fan that just goes, oh, everything he does is amazing, or you look at these, you're more critical because you, you know how good the films can be and how good he is so and and like you say that film in particular I think people like we said in the podcast people um, think it's going to be this lovely little rom-com kind of similar to Notting Hill and kind of similar to you know what he's known for but they you come away and like you say it's melancholy it's real mm -hmm. it's um it's, it is a great film for that so it's it's a it's a great film to choose as, as, as your desert island dvd <laughs> uh, maybe Mary um if I could ask you one last question uh, before we before we we leave you, um, are there any is there anything that we're doing on the podcast that you particularly enjoy, and is there anything that you would love to see in the future, um, and where maybe we can improve? Because we're always looking for improvements, and um, yeah, our, our, our major fans um, have a right to to you know to give us some guidance. I think. I think what I really like is I, li I like that you're going through the entire filmography and I like that you're breaking it up, not doing all the really well-known popular films first and just, and then kind of leaving the, you know, the rest of the, the lesser known films kind of off. Because I think mm. those films are important. And in fact, some of those films are quite, quite good. Some of the lesser known ones, um, I was thinking of one the, today, Impromptu. I think that's a fantastic movie, and I think not enough people know about that film. But mm. like, I, and I think it's it's brilliant to care to capture the whole career because I think that that whole capturing the career gives a real snapshot of of the question you guys beg for the entire podcast, which is is Hugh being taken taken for granted? <laughs> so that's what I really love about the podcast. Mary, I have to say, this is the most surreal and just incredible. I know Oscar's feeling it as well. We we started this we started this podcast, and we thought, you know, we we wouldn't really get too many people listening. You know, our mums would listen to it, and then it would they'd sort of cast it to one side, and you know, it would be that that was that. But we have someone from halfway across the world who finds our podcast. Lives in lives in Illinois, as you say, in a rural community yourself, and yet, you know, you've connected to it. I just, I feel so grateful to have you as one of our fans. Our first, as I like to put it, our first organic listener, someone that wasn't someone that we knew that listened to the podcast. I'm so glad that you found us. You're just, I, I can't believe that this is the world that we're in, and I'm so glad to have you along with the ride. No, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to connect with people. 
like you guys said, halfway across the world who enjoy, enjoy the same thing, who enjoy the same actor, who share the same love of film. And I think that's, I think that's the power of, of entertainment, the power of art. It really is. It connects people, and that's what it should do, good art. Well, well said, Mary. And uh, hopefully you can spread the podcast far and wide. We, uh, we, we're very pleased to say, actually, we haven't announced this, that we've reached over a thousand downloads and we have listeners in over 20 countries across the world. So onwards and upwards, I say. Congratulations. That's amazing to hear for you guys. That's, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. And genuinely, Mary, we, we couldn't have done it without you. I feel like you were the first... Um, you were the first person to tweet about us, you know, the first, as I say, organic listener, and it really gave, at least it gave me, a serious verve. Uh, and it, so it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you, and I thank you, thank you so much again. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. That actually makes me feel really good, too, but um, I'm really glad to be listening to you guys. And like I said, keep up the great work. You guys are doing an amazing job. Uh, I really feel, um, uh, in short, uh, to recap in a slightly clearer version, uh, in the words of David Cassidy, in fact, um, while he was still with the Partridge family. Uh, uh, Mary, we think we actually do love you. And, uh... So maybe we should move on to the next question, which was sent in um, by a man called Drew Coles via email. And this is probably the question that was, that's gone into the most detail out of any that we've got. It's a fantastic question, and we're going to call it the hu- the Hunger how, how do you pronounce it? The, <laughs> the, the, the Hunger Games. The Hunger, the Hunger Games. Games, yeah. A la the Hunger Games. Um, and the rules are, as Drew, as Drew writes in his email, so there are eight fighters um, held in the depths of Wembley Stadium. So we decided that we, we, we think it should be held at Craven Cottage. For, for listeners who don't know, Craven Cottage is the, the home ground of Fulham FC, which is who Hugh Grant supports. Um, beautiful little stadium, very old. It's right on the River Thames. Mm. Um, and you feel like you're sort of part of the city when you're there. And it's, you know, you're, it's a great atmosphere. So you should check it out. Yeah. Um, and so each Hugh Grant is armed of only one non-weapon item associated with his character into the fight. Uh, Hughes can form coalition coalitions, but there can only be one winner. If they threaten to kill one another, like Katniss and Peter did will fully let them and the fight ends when there is just one hue left conscious on the pitch i mean jesus christ there's a lot to dig into here yeah so let me just let's simplify that again there are eight hue grants they are on a football pitch craven cottage they it's a fight to the death or at least the last hue grant that's left conscious wins wins it's an all-out brawl it's the hunger games it's the hunger games um Oscar, let's maybe go through some of the people we put forward. So, first of all, Phoenix Buchanan, Paddington 2. Um, great, obviously, we all know Paddington 2, played a fantastic villain, Phoenix Buchanan, a man of many faces. His item, his weapon, would be his dog food, not to be consumed by humans. <laughs> then, okay, then we have the Prime Minister in Love, actually. Mm. Um, and... The weapon I chose was the octopus costume that the little the little <laughs> boy wears. So he's Hugh's allowed to put the octopus costume on, and yeah. then he's got his tentacles just kind of like waving around, and he maybe he can sort of I don't know jump on people and bring them in. <laughs> yeah, um, well I, maybe he's he's hoping that the tentacles will actually work for there'll be some sort of magic going on. But I think more he'll just try and try and spook people maybe by wearing that, try and spook them to death. Somehow I feel like the costume won't be much use in this fight, but neither will most of the, the weapons. Or this person's, Charles from Four Weddings and a Funeral. The only thing I've got written down here as his weapon is his beautiful glasses. What have, what have you got? <laughs> beautiful I had um, the rings that oh, he gives at the beginning of the... So if you, if you can hark your memory all the way back to our first episode, Four Weddings and Funeral... Um, Hugh forgets the rings at the wet first wedding and someone passes the wings and rings over and the ring that he puts on um, his wife's hands is like this kind of, like a gargoyle. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how much use that would be, but, you know, you got a ring on, he could punch yeah, people you, with that. Yeah, if you smack someone with one of those bad boys, I mean, I feel like Charles is the kind of bloke who doesn't have too much of a swing on him, but, you know, you can give it a go. Yeah, I have to say, Charles is not... We'll get on to who we think is going to win, but Charles is not up there for me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Moving on to the next character, Diggory, uh, William mm. Thacker, Notting Hill. What have we got yes. there for a weapon? 
a rolled up copy of the Horse and Hound magazine. I feel like it can't be anything else, unless I'm totally mistaken. That was the no, first got, thing that came to mind. That has got to be it. Um, <laughs> can you just imagine Hugh with the little, with the copy just kind of like tapping people on the shoulder and then just a slap around the face? <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely lethal. Uh, the next would be Fletcher, his character in The Gentleman. I struggle with this one because Fletcher seems like a bit of a... He could... I feel like he could hold his own in a fight. However, mm. or you know, I feel like he could maybe fight scrappy. Um cause he's 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 a he's a snidey, you know, uh, clever foxy character. The only the only thing though, his it's got to be his camera. Maybe he would with, with the he, it's huge. So if he took, you know, with all the lenses and stuff, that's a heavy piece of kit, but also maybe he could flash and daze mm. his enemies. Um That's a good shout. Yeah, Let's exactly go with before that. Before he strikes. Final two, Daniel Cleaver, Bridget Jones's diary. I think the weapon of choice surely has to be the dustbin lid that he uses to fight Colin Firth. Of course, I forgot. Yes, that's a I mean, pretty that's a pretty decent weapon. Daniel is a proven fighter. I mm. my old, like he's got some good odds behind him. But he um, certainly does. And then lastly, Lord Dampton, the lair of the white worm. Mm. Um, and the weapon of choice here, Digri, did you have anything in mind? I have something in mind. Well, annoyingly, uh, the the first thing I, th- I thought of was I thought it about his sword, you know. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, because, but, but then as as Drew said, we, they can't have any actual weapons. Um, mm. And I, go, I suppose a sword thinks that. So the only thing I could think of was the, the food that he serves at his party. But I've got something for you. Hang on, I think I, it might have just he, hit me. I think he gets the bagpipes. Oh yes, of course. So he steals course he the bagpipes, bagpipes from um, our favourite character, that Peter fat Capaldi, guy, or P- and Peter Capaldi. Yeah, and he infuriates his uh, the guys attacking him by playing the bagpipes at full volume, which Fantastic makes people go stuff. insane. Fantastic stuff. We actually do have one more. It's Will Freeman from About a Boy. Um, that completes the eight, and Will I think would have his guitar and he could play awfully, and it would really annoy people. Mm. So I guess the question is, who wins? Who's going to be the scrappiest? Yeah. Whose character has the desire to kill? And... I, I mean, let's talk about maybe the, the kind of characters we have so far. So Phoenix Buchanan is a proven villain and, a, and, and quite a dangerous bloke. I feel mm. like similar to that, Fletcher is also quite a dangerous guy. And Lord Dampton, we did see... I mean, excuse my French, but absolutely fuck up a serpentine bichoir. It is fl- cut her in half. Um, yes. So the guy, we, these are guys with a true, you know, proven track record of, of, you know, of some serious violence. Daniel Cleaver as well could, uh, you know, could smash he, people's heads in if he wanted to. In my notes, I had that Charles from Four Weddings and a Funeral and William Thacker from Notting Hill are the first to go because they're pretty pathetic characters in general. Yeah. And. You know, they're, they're not going to stand up to any kind of fight. Like, as we know, Hugh Grant fighting at the best of times. But can you imagine one of those two <laughs> actually going at, going at it? Yeah. There's no way. I just like the idea of William Thacker running at uh, Daniel Cleaver with his rolled up copy of the Horse and Hound magazine held high above his head. And you think it's all, and as he, it's about to clang down... He smacks, he smacks Daniel Cleaver across the face with a horse and hound, and Daniel Cleaver gives him one look and just smacks him with a dustbin lid, and William Thacker is out for the count. He is, he's unconscious, and the little minions take him away. William Thacker just also sounds like a name that shouldn't be able to fight. Yeah, unfortunately, the the, the readers of the Horse and Hound magazine will not be very happy to hear that. They, they will not be happy. Anyway, Diggs, maybe we should come back to this at the end. Otherwise, we won't have time for all the other questions. Let's do it. Look out the window. Look out the window. Look out the window. It's you Grant in a prep. Oscar, I've got to ask you another question here. This one's specifically for you from Liam Barry uh, via Instagram. Oscar, if they made a sequel to Too Fast, Too Furious starring Hugh Grant, no brainer in my opinion, would they have to call it Hugh Fast, Hugh Furious? Well, I mean, it looks like Liam already knows exactly how this <laughs> podcast works because that's a fantastic pun. Yeah, you love it. I, I, I'm just going to have to go straight up, yes. I'm afraid I'm not a huge too, uh, Fast and Furious man myself, um, but Hugh Grant in Fast and Furious Sounds like a fantastic, fantastic idea. Sounds like a joyride. 
All right, next question from a certain Nick Dobbs via Instagram. Who would win in a head-to-head Hugh Grant quiz, Diggory or Oscar? I mean, this is controversial. This is controversial. This is like, you know that game where you play at at pre-drinks where you like stand back to back and someone asks a question and you have to drink if you think it's you. You know, it's Mm. like, oh, he's... That would be a tough one for us. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. To be honest, this is annoying because I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll write a quiz then and I'll put you to the test. But it's like, well, then I would know all the answers because I wrote the quiz. Look, I'm going to be modest and I'm going to say that Diggory would win. You see, I, I don't even You've know You've done more research born. than me, mate. Uh, I don't even... I don't know. Well, mate, you do know that he was born only a day after Colin Firth, which is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I suppose that... I, you I th- come up with these random pieces of <laughs> trivia that no one else knows. <laughs> That's very kind. Well, we don't even know if it's true, though. I might have just made it up to it sound It is true. Cool. Is it true? Did you check it yeah, out? Yeah, I looked it up. Oh, mate. Fact check UK over there. You love to see it. I'm so glad you're checking me yeah, out. Mate, That's everything's, everything's fact checked on this podcast. Yeah, mate. Of course. Absolutely. Well, who's the one who does all the research now? Christine Keenan via email. Does Hugh work for love or for money? Okay, I'm, I, I might just jump in on this one because... Mm. Uh, Christine, thank you for this fantastic mm. message. I'm not sure Christine actually knows what a podcast is, though. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in emailing, so Christine sent this email to me, um, to the Taking Hugh for Granted email, and I said, she said, um, you know, does Hugh work for love or money? One liner. And I said, thanks for the question. She said, you haven't answered it. She, watched, she replied, but I think I have the answer, said all these things. And, she, and then I said, great, um, we'll, we'll answer on the podcast. And then she replied back, I don't know how to watch podcasts. Ah. So that made me think that maybe she doesn't know what podcast is. Right. But anyway, there Christine. Yes. If you're listening. Yeah. Um, if you're somehow watching. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> does Hugh work for love or money? I was a bit confused about the question because um, does he, do you mean does he work for the love of acting or do you work for falling in love? Because those are two different things. Ah. Um, we, we both know that he, I don't think he does it necessarily for the love of acting no. and he doesn't necessarily do it for the love of the money but I, I i don't know what do you think dig i think unfortunately uh i'm gonna have to take a cynical view here he doesn't like acting very much as in you know before he does takes a role on he will write down a notes page on his phone about all the reasons why he shouldn't do it and doesn't want to do it and really has to be dragged kicking and screaming onto set every day he absolutely Mm. hates it because he's self-conscious so does he but then does he do it for money i'm not too sure i'm sure he's handsomely repaid but i'm not too sure if he's because if because if he was completely about money um i think he he we'd see him in a lot more stuff and he would Mm. you know and he'd be much more lavish with what he's spending he does he's meticulous with his scripts that's what i would say he does films to entertain people not to prove his acting prowess not to you know win best oscar he knows that films are to entertain people and he knows that a good script will do that and so that's how he chooses his roles Okay, well, thanks, Christine. Uh, moving on, we've got a couple more left. Angus wants to know, how many six-year-olds could Hugh Grant take down if they all charged him simultaneously? I mean, I have to say, there's been, there's been a thread running through this episode, which has been very, very violent. Um, <laughs> and it's all been about sort of, you know, Hunger Games-esque skirmishes. But, um, Oscar, mm. how many six-year-olds could Hugh take down? Oh, I like to think angry Hugh Grant could take down quite a few. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon like six year olds. Six year olds are pretty small. Yeah, I mean, I reckon I could take down like. I reckon I. Oh, it's actually hard to think. It maybe, really is. Maybe ten. 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 Ten six year olds. Because thing is, I, I was having this because I saw this question and I was talking to my friend about it the other day, and we would we were discussing it, and I think it's it's funny. If if it was if it was eight year olds, it's a completely different ball game. I feel like even just that two year gap. If you have yeah. a few eight year olds running at you, they can do. They're a bit more crazy. But six year olds, if you think you could take ten, I think I could take six. I think I could I take maybe say six. You, how about twenty? I mean, twenty six year olds. Mate, oh my! Think word. about it. Like, <laughs> actually, <laughs> if they're really scrappy, if they're really it, scrappy, yeah, man. But it, you know, you just. I'm just thinking like well, maybe, almost in the movies where it's like a you're one punching them. It's like a, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's, see, what's the, what's it in COD? Um, one shot kill. Like oh yeah, insta kill. Yeah, instant in, kill. In you know, you just like push, yeah. push, push, push. <laughs> the point is to answer Angus's question. I think Hugh could take down. For being serious, Hugh could take down. He's he's getting he's getting on slightly. He's just I think he's past his peak. 
Mm. And I think he could take down nine (laughs) six-year-olds. This is so weird. This crazy. I love it. Okay, then, Diggs, to finish with, let's go back and answer Drew's question. Who would win the Hununga Games? That's a great shout, mate. Um... The, the one the one I was struggling with a little bit was the prime minister. You'd have to think that maybe his dance moves would come would come in handy in a fight like this. A little like shimmy yes. to get away from people. Yes. Um, and and yeah, he, I think he's more delicate on his toes than any of the other characters. And also, you know, he's got the I was thinking as a secondary weapon. Not if this is allowed, Drew. He's got mm. the chocolate biscuits and the tea. <laughs> on point so yeah exactly. he's just all because you know, can imagine the prime minister starts serving cups of tea and chocolate biscuits Ooh. the rest of the hugh grants just sit down and, and sort of you know naturally want to oh. share that that those biscuits and and tea with him oscar that is that i think we might have to change it that is actually i mean that's too good you're absolutely right what hugh grant in their right mind could resist tea and biscuits it's the it's the perfect approach the diplomatic approach the uh the political approach of let's mm. all get around the negotiating table let's all have a cup of tea so mm. that's a fantastic idea so that i suppose you change that round so the prime minister maybe lasts a few rounds i think then who can you shag around here to get a cup of... <laughs> <What's> the... <laughs> what is it t- who, do we... who do you have to shag around here to get a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit i think we can we can then rule out William Thacker, I think we can rule out Will Freeman from About a Boy with his guitar. Like, he could start playing. It would be a bit shit, but, I mean, his guitar, he could raise it above his head, but I feel like Charles from Four Ways in a Funeral with his um, knuckle duster, duster-esque duster ring <laughs> socks him in the fucking mouth and he hits the deck. I think Phoenix Buchanan's going to have a hard time here because he is only armed with some dog food, which to be fair is not meant for humans. But I think even if he manages to, you know, force that down someone's throat, it's not going to kill them for at least a while because he himself ate a lot of it um, when he wasn't getting paid for any other jobs. That is true. Although I was thinking that he could use a full, a full can as a weapon. If he throws that, you know, if, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine like a baked bean can kind of flying your head. I mean, if that hit you, you're, you're That's out That's a great cold. shout. So... I don't know, how, Drew. The question is: Are we? Is he allowed a box of dog food mm. or one single can? Because one single can, he might be in trouble. But a box. A box. I guess we, okay, for the purpose of this, we'll say he's only got a can. I think he's only got a can. Well, the thing is, I, I again, I can see it. Fletcher, I imagine the way that Fletcher would play the games, as we know, he's a guy that operates within the shadows. He gets his camera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The way that he would operate this game is he would, he would try and seek cover instantly, survey the area. Get a story, get a picture of what's going on and work out from there how he can manipulate the situation to himself. But I imagine as as Fletcher is is making off to do that, uh, he could well be spotted by Phoenix Buchanan, who mm. if he get if he launches this this thing just right, he could and he hits Fletcher in the right spot in the temple. Fletcher might not be down and out, but Fletcher could be in some serious trouble. Diggory, we've got to come to a conclusion here. We've been talking about about this forever, <laughs> it seems. And we could talk about it forever. I want a winner of yeah. the Huunga Games. Mm. And I want a reason why. I I, ha- I can't... I, I don't want to say this for some weird reason, but I have to be true to myself. I think Fletcher from The Gentleman would be the overall winner. I think the man is... He's shrewd. He's clever. I feel like he knows how to manipulate situations to how he wants them to go. His camera might be able to daze his opponents. He can hit them hard. So I think I can't divorce myself from what I truly believe. And I think Fletcher would just steal it at the last minute. He'd be a big underdog. But I think he'd play his game carefully, hide behind the, the chairs, take his photos, survey the situation. I think Fletcher would be the winner. What about you? I think Lord Dampton would win, personally. Really? I think the, ba- I think the bagpipes uh, coming out mm. would be able to... D- distract his opponents who would be thinking oh he's playing them some music and then Mm -hmm. bang suddenly he just like takes them out two bagpipes out like like (laughs) like like two guns like holsters like and then he's like (laughs) yeah i love it and starts stabbing people that's amazing yeah it would be like that bit in i think it's the two towers maybe when legolas pulls those two swords from out of his back and then starts hitting killing exactly. orcs and goblins with it but instead of that it's just he rips off a couple of the bagpipes an honorable mention for me as well goes for the prime minister i think his dip- 
diplomacy might take him longer than he would have done otherwise. But I think for me, the real winner in that in that whole thing is Drew Coles. Thank you for a fantastic question. This one really got my mind buzzing. If you guys have any ideas on who you think would win, any scenarios you think it would happen, any characters you think should have been included, please message in. This has been a fantastic question. It's really got my creative ju juices flowing. I've loved it. Taking heat for granted. Taking heat for granted. Taking heat for granted. What did you think, lads? Were they taking heat for granted? Thank you very much, everyone. It's been a fantastic episode. Uh, that's our Q&A, Finito Incantatum. I'm sorry if we didn't get around to your question. Um, yeah, there were actually way more coming in than we realised. So thank you so much for that. And thank you so much as well um, to Mary. She was a, a fantastic sport and it was great to have her on the podcast. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next time for more Hugh Grant films. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs>